So in today's video, I want to talk about five holy girl habits that you can implement this year to change your life. And one of the first holy girl habits that will change your life is stewarding your body well. I know we hear this all the time, right? We hear eat healthy, work out, drink your water. And we hear it all the time, but sometimes we can become numb to it, right? It is so important that if you're going to be walking in your purpose, that you are stewarding the body that God gave you. Two scriptures that have completely changed my outlook on how I steward my body is number one, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 through 20. And it says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. This scripture tells us that our body does not belong to us. Literally, it is the home where the Holy Spirit dwells. And can you imagine going into someone's house and it's filthy all over the place? They're not taking care of their daily maintenance. And so it's going to make you feel very uncomfortable, right? That's how it feels when we're feeding our body with junk, when we're not stewarding our body well, right? We're literally allowing the Holy Spirit to live in a place of junk. And that is not fair because God is pure, holy, and we want him to feel comfortable in the body that he's so gifted us right to live in it is a beautiful blessing to have this body and we have to start taking it seriously another scripture that has made a huge outlook on how i steward my body is romans 12 verse 1 and it says and so dear brothers and sisters i plead with you to give your bodies to god because of all he has done for you Let them, as in your body, be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. When you begin to take care of your body, you are literally offering true worship to the Lord, right? You're giving him a living sacrifice, right? You have to be alive and well in order to be a living sacrifice, which means that you have to start doing the things that you know you need to do, okay? You got to start working out. You got to start eating cleaner. You got to start drinking that water because it's not just about you, but it's also about offering your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. And this is one of those areas, honestly, that I really struggle with. So over the past few weeks, I've been sharing with you guys a little bit about my health journey and telling you that I've been struggling heavily with extreme fatigue and bloating to the point where it's been very painful and affecting my day-to-day life. And I've tried to work out before, but I was just very inconsistent and overwhelmed because I felt like the workouts that I was doing were not helping me to gain more energy or helping with my bloating. Plus, I can't even open a pickle jar, you guys. I have little to no strength. And so I decided that this year was going to be the year that I really invested in becoming the healthiest version of myself, also for the glory of God. I want to be able to steward my body well. And that is why I am so excited to introduce Copilot Fitness, who will be partnering with me on today's video. And of course, Copilot Fitness has a special deal for those of you who are looking to become the healthiest version of yourself and start your fitness journey. And you can click the link in my description box to learn more about that. So let me tell you about Copilot Fitness. First of all, they are literally a godsend because I have been very inconsistent in my workouts and Copilot Fitness has changed the game for me. So Copilot Fitness gives you a unique fitness program that is custom tailored for you. It's based on your schedule, your availability, the equipment that you have at home or in your gym. You'll get step-by-step workouts, a dedicated fitness trainer, yes, your own dedicated personal trainer, and progress tracking through the Copilot Fitness app. So once you sign up, you'll actually have a video chat with your certified personal trainer. And this is an opportunity for you all to get to know each other better. You'll discuss your goals and any limitations. And then they'll start to put together a plan to help you succeed. My trainer, shout out to Coach Jay, is literally the perfect match for me. She's analytical, but she still like has that tough love, but still fun. And it's all of the things that I need in my life. On our meeting, I shared with her some of my fitness goals, which were to build energy because I'm so tired of depending on caffeine and being fatigued. I also wanted to reduce my bloating and build some strength, okay? You're talking about someone who couldn't even open a pickle jar, okay? I had no muscle, so I really want to build muscle during this time and be consistent. I told you guys before that my workouts were very sporadic. I was just pulling from here and there, but I really wasn't seeing any progress. So I wanted to make sure that I'm getting a plan that is 
is actually going to move me closer to my goals. And my trainer, Coach Jay, has done just that. The plan that she put together for me is so strategic and it's flexible with my busy schedule. I have a million decisions to make a day and so I don't want to worry about what I'm going to do or if I'm even doing the right thing. And so having this custom workout plan has really allowed me to be so much more consistent. I love how all I have to do is go to the app and everything plays out. I hear my trainer's voice in the background as I am actually working through the workouts. Everything is planned out by your personal trainer who is going to give you that accountability, that encouragement and support along the way. And that makes a huge difference, especially when you're trying to be consistent like me. I really believe that accountability is the key to consistency. And sometimes you really do need a person in your corner that will hold you accountable for those moments where your motivation runs out and you just don't have it. Since I've been working through my trainer, I have so much more energy, okay? Where I used to rely heavily on like charged lemonades and caffeine, I'm now getting that natural energy boost from my workouts. And that's something that I've really been desiring. I've also seen a significant decrease in my bloating as I've been talking to her about some of my diet changes that are necessary. And it's been working, okay? I feel so much more comfortable in my body. And it just makes me feel good to know that I'm working towards those overall goals and I'm seeing results. Girl, I could say so much more, but you should really just try it out for yourself. Say goodbye to decision fatigue and analysis by paralysis and start being consistent in your workouts today. So go ahead and click my Copilot Fitness link in the description box below and you'll get 14 days free with your own personal trainer. Girl, this is your year to become the healthiest version of you and honor God with your body. Copilot Fitness has been a game changer for me and I know it will be for you too. So thank you again to Copilot Fitness for sponsoring today's video. Now, the second holy girl habit that has been changing my life is practicing the Sabbath. Okay, I was introduced to a book a couple years ago by Tatum called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And in this book, it talked about literally slowing down your life so that you can actually surrender to the Lord, have a lot more peace throughout your day. And one of the main principles it talked about in the book was the Sabbath. Now, I had come across the Sabbath while reading the Bible, but I honestly didn't pay too much attention to it because resting has not always been my specialty. I am a on-the-go type of girly, stay busy. But what I learned about the Sabbath is that it is literally a gift from God to us. It is an invitation into his rest so that we can be refreshed. So the scripture that talks about the Sabbath that I want to mention is in Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11. And it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son, or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. If the true and living God who never sleeps nor slumbers needs rest, then how much more rest do we need? Okay, we are human. We are always running out of strength. And thankfully, we have the strength of the Lord to rely on. And one of the ways he does that is through the Sabbath. So for me, it took a while for me to get into the habit of the Sabbath because sometimes on Sundays, I would be doing a lot of like cleaning and resetting and maintenance. But then after a while, I realized that most of my day was still working. I was still doing all of like the chores and the maintenance and it took up majority of my day and I didn't even really get any time to spend and dwell with God. So recently, I've been working my way and readjusting my schedule to do a lot of those tasks and maintenance things that I would typically do on Sunday and putting them earlier during the week because my goal is to get to a place where I can fully recover, cease from all work, and just be refreshed in the presence of the Lord each and every single Sunday. Now, I know there's some back and forth about what day to practice the Sabbath, but for me, I do it on Sundays because that's the most realistic based on my schedule. And the time that I have practiced the Sabbath, I have felt so refreshed to the point where by the end of the week, I wasn't even feeling as burnt out as I was before. A lot of times we're experiencing burnout because we don't take enough rest, right? When you're sleeping, sometimes you're not even resting. But there's a different experience that happens when you begin to sit in the presence of the Lord and allow him to fill you up spiritually. When you are spiritually full, it will make up for any physical strength that you lack. 
So consider practicing the Sabbath and making it a part of your weekly routine. And if you haven't already read The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, please read that book. It completely changes your perspective on, you know, busy versus productive and the importance of resting. And I'll go ahead and leave the link to that book in the description box as well. Now, the third Holy Girl habit that you can use to change your life is prioritizing prayer and silence. We obviously know the importance of prayer as Christians, but how much do we actually take time to dedicate to prayer and silence specifically? Prayer is not just a one-way street. It's not a one-sided conversation. Prayer is supposed to be a two-sided conversation between you and the Lord. And sometimes we spend so much time talking and not enough time listening. And then we're saying like, oh, God isn't speaking to me. I don't know what God is saying. Maybe you're just not postured in a place to hear him. So one of the things I've been doing over the past few years is prioritizing time for my prayer, but also prioritizing time for silence. So what this looks like for me is often after I pray, I will dedicate at least five to 10 minutes on sitting still. Sometimes, depending on my schedule, I'm not able to do it all in the same session. But if I have to take a car ride somewhere, instead of listening to music, I'll just drive in silence. And this is training my mind to, one, be comfortable with silence, but also posturing and giving the Lord room to speak to me. Some of the video ideas and the greatest ideas that God has ever given me has been in moments of silence. In areas where I used to be very confused and all over the place, when I sit still, I can actually receive the clarity instruction from the Lord. And now more than ever in this age where we are bombarded by information, it is so important to prioritize those moments of silence and to get away from people and the distractions just like Jesus did and spend one-on-one time with the Father. Prayer does not have to be complicated, right? Prayer is a conversation between you and the Lord. And one of the things that will help you, again, is to make sure that you're meditating on the word. The more of the word you know, the easier it will be for you to pray because you're actually going to be praying God's word back to him, right? And that is very strategic because it is the word of God that begins to change things, right? It's not always our tears. It's not always the good things that we want to say. Praying the word back to God has power in it, and it will really transform the way that you receive your breakthroughs. So I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the time that you pray, but just making sure that you are prioritizing prayer. So whether you do this early in the morning or you do it late at night, you do it on your lunch break, whatever it is, just prioritize having conversation with God throughout your day instead of just, you know, designating one small moment for him. Like the Lord wants to be involved in every aspect of your life. He wants to provide you with wisdom and knowledge. And so just invite him into the little decisions, right? Lord, what should I eat today? What do you think about this thing? What do you think about that? And you'll be able to build up that conversation and you'll be surprised at what the Lord will begin to reveal to you as you prioritize those moments of prayer and silence. So the fourth Holy Girl habit that I have implemented that has completely changed my life and I know will change yours is pre-planning my day. Okay, if you watch any of my videos, you know that I do a weekly plan with me series where I show you guys how I plan out my week each and every single week. So a couple of years ago, I was just making a daily to-do list and I noticed that the to-do list would keep rising, but I wasn't necessarily getting more done. I found myself being very reactive to, you know, unplanned circumstances and unplanned events in my life. And it was really stressing me out. And, And so I was like, okay, I need a better strategy to be more prepared for my week. So what I started doing was planning out my week ahead of time on Fridays. So every Friday, I plan out my week for the next week, and that has changed the game for me because it's given me a high-level overview of how to strategically use my time. One of the things that I said to myself over the past few years is that I really want to steward the time that God has given me well. There are a lot of things that God has called me to do, and, and if I'm not managing my time properly, a lot of things aren't going to get done, and I'm going to be very burnt out. If you don't have enough time to plan out your week in advance, at least plan out your to-do list the night before. Sometimes when you wait the day of, you're already starting your day in a reactive mode when you could be proactive about it and the moments where you actually plan out your day before you start you're already hitting the ground running and you're going to reduce a lot of that decision fatigue throughout the week we have so many different decisions to make and sometimes we procrastinate on doing certain things because we're using all of our mental exhaustion responding to things instead of being proactive 
And one of the things that has made such a difference in my pre-planning routine is spending time with the Lord before I do this. That way I'm already in the presence of God. I'm already considering him and what's going on in my week because I can only see what, you know, is on my plate, but the Lord sees way further down than me. He knows that unforeseen event that's going to come up. He knows that task that I've been putting off and, you know, where it's going to lay out in my week. So I'm getting so much more wisdom when I invite God into my pre-planning process. And you would be surprised at the end of the year how much stuff you get done when you pre-plan out your week. Now, the fifth Holy Girl habit that will change your life is protecting your ear and eye gate and also watching your mouth. Now, I'm going to break down what this means. It is so important that we begin to watch what we feed our spirits on a daily basis. And this is an area that has made a huge impact on just my overall mental health over the past few years is being mindful of the music that I listen to, being mindful of the TV shows that I'm watching, right? The articles and the books that I'm reading, because subconsciously these things get planted in your mind and they can start to make you develop anxiousness or a vulnerability to certain temptations if you're not careful, right? And hear me when I'm saying this. I'm not saying this from a religious aspect. I'm saying this from a place of wisdom that whatever you consume, really does change the way that you see certain things. You could be minding your business and in a great peaceful place and all of a sudden after spending too much time on social media, now you're dealing with anxiousness, you're dealing with comparison, envy, jealousy, you have fears that you didn't have before and then you don't even notice where those things are coming from. But a lot of that stuff is coming from the things that you consume on a daily basis. Recently over the past few years, I've started unfollowing any of the accounts that I was toxically comparing myself to Anything that was putting a negative image about, you know, myself and my mind, I started unfollowing those things. I stopped watching a lot of these TV shows that were glorifying adultery and seduction and all these other things because it was really starting to leave these kind of stains in my mind that affected the way I saw myself as a woman and also just like how I approached daily life, right? The the media and the TV shows and the music is not the same as what it used to be. A lot of it is heavily rooted in agendas that just do not glorify God. And the more we consume ourselves with these things, the more we begin to grow grieve the Holy Spirit. I remember I was watching this show that was actually recommended to me and I started watching this show and it just had so many different themes and things that were making me very uncomfortable. And I felt the Holy Spirit checking me to be like, okay, don't watch this. You know, I don't want you watching this. And I was just like, you know, it's just a TV show. I want to keep watching it. And then I actually got convicted and I realized that I was grieving the Holy Spirit by what I was watching. And it was one of those areas where I realized that I had made, you know, just being entertained an idol. And so this is a personal reflection that I'm just sharing with you and you'd be led by your own convictions, but just be careful with what you are exposing yourself to on a daily basis, especially your circle, right? Like if your circle is always gossiping, if you're always around people that are complaining and murmuring and all of these things, eventually you're going to pick up on those things. So one of the best things that I have been doing is watching my mouth. When I'm tempted to say certain things that I know are not in alignment with what God will want me to say, I try to practice being quiet. I try to stay away from people who are constantly complaining and gossiping because that is something that our flesh is naturally inclined to. And for me, if I'm around that for too long, I'll start to emulate those behaviors. And this year, we are just practicing walking in the fruits of the Spirit. I am not perfect. You are not perfect. But this area of just guarding what comes in and what comes out can make such a huge difference in your life. And for me, I really want to be the type of person that glorifies God both in public and in private. So I'm trying to be mindful about how I act and what I consume. I'm telling you, even those small changes make such a difference. So all the things that I've shared are just small things that I have implemented in my life that have completely changed the way that I move, that have deepened my intimacy with the Lord. And it's not about meeting a Christian to-do list or trying to become perfect or legalistic. It's literally just about living a life that makes you become closer to Christ, right? This life is really not about us. We were made by God for his glory. And so we should be looking for ways that he can get the glory out of our lives and even the small details how we treat others, how we treat ourselves, right? Those things make a difference. So it's not always about the aesthetics and having the pretty things, although 
I love an aesthetic vibe over here, but it's really about changing those internal things so that you are mirroring Christ. When is the last time that you shared the gospel or you made a disciple or even just looking at your life in general, right? Sometimes you're the only version of the Bible that anyone will ever read. How does the way that you live your life represent Christ, right? These are the things that we want to be considering on a daily. And like I said, it's not about perfection, but even those small habits can make such a big difference. So with that being said, let's go ahead and recap the five Holy Girl habits that you can use to change your life. Number one, stewarding your body well. Eat good food, work out, make a plan. If you need to invest in yourself because you know you need accountability, check out Copilot Fitness, okay? You're gonna get a personal trainer that is gonna give a custom plan for you and it's a real person and the app will walk you through everything. So Copilot Fitness, huge game changer for me because that was just one of the areas I was really struggling in. Number two, start practicing the Sabbath. Even if you can just get it in maybe once a month, like just start getting in the habit of dedicating at least one day a week that you can be refreshed by the Lord and just practice that rest. It makes such a huge difference and it's worth the investment. Number three, prioritize prayer and silence, okay? Prayer is a two-way conversation between you and the Lord. So as you begin to pray, also give him time to speak. It makes such a huge difference. Number four, pre-plan your day, okay? Do not wait until the day of to start planning out what you're going to do. And number five, protect your ear gate and eye gate and watch your mouth. I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know which Holy Girl habit you're going to implement this year in the comments. And don't forget to click the link in the description box to partner with Copilot Fitness for your free two-week trial. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you on the next video.